How's it going everyone? Today is my 700th day on Blazing and yeah, it's been a lot of days, man. I've been grinding it ever since at least the beginning of 2018 consistently. I played it a little bit back before that in 2017, but wow, it's been a ride so far, but we still have a ways to go before we get to that 1k. But all right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be jumping back into Ninja Road and I'm going to be showing you guys the best way to go ahead and complete map 9. So when it comes to this Ninja Road, I've actually switched my team up quite a bit. Like this is the team I actually use here no final value units at all and it really gets me through the ninja road relatively quickly I can get through in like 10 to 11 minutes it's really not that bad actually but I love this team because <laughs> you can probably notice a pattern here especially from the first row the middle column especially and then going forward as well you can tell that I have Hashirama, Pain, Madara, Gara. those those four right there are going to be amazing when it comes to the AoE damage so that's exactly why I have them four and then Kagi and Obito are there for the heart damage and also the healing so this team in particular right here is what's going to help me when it comes to map 9 because I personally think that map 9 is the hardest map on Ninja Road 34 just because when it comes to Kaguya she's annoying because she has status elements but she's a single unit to worry about and as long as you spread out it's not that big of a deal whereas with the other units there's three of them so spreading out from all three can be a little difficult especially when you take into account that pain's ultimate hits everybody no matter where you're at so that's pretty bad plus at the same time the Ostra path can actually go ahead and immobilize you which is something Kaguya cannot she can make it where you're stuck in a little area but immobilization is far worse in my opinion so yeah with that said that map is a lot more difficult but I think a lot of people should have these units by now if you don't then I'm just gonna have to go ahead and say use Madara the Sage of Six Pass Madara or any unit that can just nullify it like Hashirama, Madara and Pain all have something that lets them you know ignore the damage but even then I don't use that half the time I just spam their ults so we'll be jumping into that and so yeah that, there's that the other, other team I use is this one and you if you guys saw Rokage's video today my boy actually we had the same idea I was originally gonna do a one-shot for EMS Sasuke uh, because I used this exact team just to one-shot Kaguya and it's funny because <laughs> we both thought of the same thing but I actually if you follow me on Twitter you know that the other day I actually gave my Sasuke these two abilities finally just so I could one-shot Kaguya and make grinding this ninja road easier so with that said I sacrificed two of my acquisition stones and I think that's pretty important too. But with that said, I'm gonna be showing you guys how we can complete the maps. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the same kind of strategy applies here on map seven as well. I just go ahead and use all the AOE jutsu I can. And it doesn't matter because we'll be getting chakra back after Susano Itachi as well anyway. But it's pretty simple. I'll just show you a basic part of it here on map seven because I think it's pretty important once you get to the seventh and ninth map and even the tenth are usually the hardest. But what I like to go ahead and do is just take advantage of the boost like for Gara and Madara for instance and just keep using Jutsu like this. Obviously the Ultra Combos pair in hand which is what I'll be talking about on map 9. But it's really not that difficult even on this map alone. I mean this map is really easy compared to map 9 obviously but the same principle applies of course. The only thing is you need to spread out more when it comes to map 9 but here it's not that big of a deal. That's why I just go ahead and put everybody together so we have damage reduction, we have combination attacks, all that type of stuff. But alright, so let me go ahead and kill off Data right here. It's really not that big of a deal though because, like I said, we'll get Chakra back after this. And then for map 9 though, you actually do need to do it in a little bit of a particular order. At least it makes it a little bit easier. But for this map, I just go ahead and jump right into it. It really does not matter all that much. So just go ahead and kill off. I need to save the Jutsu in the back though because when I get to map 8, what I personally do against Itachi is I go ahead and use my girl Kaguya and my boy Obito and Pain. And what's really funny is even though Itachi is a body type and usually switches to a heart type, this team can smack him around all the same. So I'm actually going to show you part of this map, if not all of it, depending on how fast it goes, just so you can see how quick this... Uh, I usually wait for the heart type to switch over. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I should have maybe took Pain off the field. But I usually wait here until it can switch the typing and it's important to show this map as well I feel because going into the next map you need to know what rotation I'm going to be starting in and it's usually very particular so it's not that bad. So first of all I need to wait for the special technique to or the secret technique to go ahead and go ahead and hit pain that's fine. He doesn't do that much damage of course. Then I go ahead and bring out my heart type users because I did this in my other video the other day with the boss health but I feel like this is a more refined strategy and so if you watch that video you know how much health this man has. And you know how much health Kagi have and all of them. So yeah, using a team like this is actually really good for that. So Pain can go ahead and do this. And then Kagi is the main one. 
And then if I want to, I can go ahead and use Gara or somebody, but I like to save those AoE Jutsu. So for map 7, we use all the AoE, and we save the single target Jutsu for this map, and then we do the same in reverse for the other one. So it's quite simple, really. You just have to kind of go ahead and do that. So once I get to this part, I usually wait to try to get Obito's ult. I can go ahead and use Gara's. I sometimes use Gara's just because it's like a waste not to when you have his ult, because his ult gives you back 10 chakra. Or not 10 chakra, what am I saying? 4 chakra. So yeah, you can pretty much get an ult no matter what, and that's really good. And this should line up an ultra combo there as well, so that's good. But Obito did not get the ult. But this is really a good way to go ahead and just get through this map. And then it's a really easy strategy for map 9 as well. Alright, so I am going to go ahead and finish it with Obito here. And that's usually what I like to do. And you'll see why I do that. Because moving on into the next map, we actually need to bring out my other units. Because to avoid the Ashura's path of immobilizing you, you need to take advantage of Obito's sync skill in this case. So he can't get immobilized if I take all the other heart units off the field. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I like to do it in this way right here. If you have other units out, then obviously you're already good. But because of the rotation I have right here, I'm just going to go ahead and switch out now. And I'll bring them all around, just spread out as well as much as I can. So in this case, I put Hashirama over here. It doesn't really matter. Matter, you know just get away from the Ostrower path that way that he always goes for Obito and because I take out my other hard time unit off the field I do not have to worry about Obito getting immobilized which is obviously very important so that's what I pretty much do because the Asura path can really just mess you up by immobilizing you that's the biggest thing in my opinion because getting immobilized even on just one unit is not good especially when you need to use like healing and other things like that so now what I'll do is I'll just bring him up here I got a chakra recess so that's really good if you don't get one it is what it is still because the chakra recovery is doubled for so long now in this case if you're hurting on health or you don't have that much heals you can even just go ahead and use like I could go ahead and use a uh, Hashirama's here and I would be able to nullify any ninjutsu which might be a little clutch to do because especially because the fact that he's about to use the secret technique but I really don't need to so I'm gonna go ahead and just move out here we have heals too so that's pretty good but what I really hate is that the secret technique can hit so many people but as you can see Madara is dodging up there as well so it's not that big of a deal but all right, so we're good now pretty much. I'll use Madara's ult. I could go down there to Gara as well, but because he's about to use a danger, I don't know if I want to do that necessarily. So I'm just going to stay up here still and go ahead and use this ult right here. And no chakra reset at that time, but that's fine. And what's really good is all the ultra combos kind of go together. So the fact is that all the ultra combos boost them up themselves. So I really don't have to worry about ever running out of chakra because the ultra combos boost them up so well. And right there, I got immobilized, but at this point, it really doesn't matter. That's why I go ahead and just leave Madara out onto the field. And he did dodge a lot of it, so that's really good. And then I go ahead and use Hashirama, and there we go. That takes care of map 9. It's really not that hard. It's it's not. When you have a team like this, it's not because the AoE, they just they work so well off each other. Alright, and to finish it off, I'll go ahead and do this. So once you get to map 10, it's pretty much easier than map 9, which is why I personally think it's a harder map on map 9. So I do the same thing, like I said, that Rokage does. I think it's cool that we both like had the same similar strategy here. I do things a bit differently, though, than he does. He takes advantage of KCM Naruto, and that is a really good way, actually, it's better than what I'm doing here because this is just up to chance if you have one tail but if you do have the one tail he gives you an attack boost of 200 so what I do is I put him there with Kakashi so you get a 700 boost of attack now with that paired with Madara underneath Sasuke the 150 boost is enough to go ahead and one shot this girl right here and that's completely why I use two of my acquisition stones the alternative was giving my Kakashi seven acquisition stones so yeah I went ahead and did this instead and it's really cool that he's able to one shot this Kaguya He's right over it as well, so that's really nice. And that's why this Ninja Road is actually not that bad for me now. I'm able to get through it relatively easily. And the only boosting that I do is on my boy sasuke right there and it's just because how can you not sasuke is just fun to use like that so that's gonna be it for today i hope you all enjoyed this i know a lot of you aren't probably necessarily gonna have that type of team setup but really if you don't then attempting this ninja road isn't really worth it that's kind of how blazing is you gotta work your way up for the longest i wasn't able to do ninja roads until i got the units that's part of the game so if you don't have units that have a lot of aoe damage or that can bypass certain things like immobilization you don't really need anything that can nullify the damage taken because i didn't use my and or Hashirama's there I did use pains but he wasn't even affected at all by any of the jutsu so you really don't need that you just need to have a mobilization resistant on at least one unit that can go ahead and take the hits and the dodging helps as well but other than that you just need aoe damage so hopefully you found that helpful this is the strategy I used for that map and I hope you all enjoyed this thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video